This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hey everyone, my name is James Horn. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over the process of how I texture this, but we're going to do it in a more painty style. And we're going to use filters in Substance Painter to kind of cheat our way into it. So we're not going to do any hand painting. We're going to do a more sort of technical approach, which is a bit quicker as it's pros and cons. So we'll have a look at that. Kind of the goal idea is to texture it a bit like this scene sort of just sort of basic colour, nice shapes. And then we'll apply some filters and we'll try and push your painty look of it. And Substance has got loads of cool stuff for this, so it's great to have a look at it and check it out. So we'll just minimise this down. Um, this is my model. It's pre-baked. Uh, there's no normal in it, but we use all the other maps for generators and filters and stuff, so it's good to have those. And even though we're not using a normal, we're still using the AO, which I, quite, I think it's an important map to have. So to start with, I like to organize my model because I've already done a bit here. But uh, basically it's just setting up the folder structure so we know which bit we're working on. And we kind of do this anyway. So I think it's better just to get a head start. So we'll do our brick material here. We'll just color pick that so we know roughly what it is. And then we'll just mask it out. And I'm going to use the polygon selects. And there's a couple of different modes here. So the triangle selects, it will fill one triangle quad. Quad will fill a single quad. And this is all mesh based. And then this will fill the, the element of your object. So that does a, I guess most of our brick texture in. Bam, just like that. And then I'm gonna sort of chip away at this mask using the UV island. Because I don't want this area to be brick. I don't want the windows to be bricked up. And that's gonna be roof tiles. And it's kind of a bit of a boring process, this bit, but it's going to save us some time later on. And it's going to help us get a better representation of our finished model earlier, just so we can iterate and see what works, doesn't work uh, a bit quicker. And, you know, we could bake out a an ID map, like a material ID map in, subs in Blender or 3ds Max, whatever people use. But I think it's easier to do it in Substance because we get to keep all our iteration here and like this I'd have to rebake a map if I make a model editor or whatever. And it's also worth noting that this model because it's been it's kind of been chopped up a bit so I'm going to repeat this element after it's been textured along here and here and here. So basically this means we only have to texture it once and we don't get like a double bake. So this bit's going to bake on that UV island. If it was duplicated here in the scene then I'm going to bake it on the other side as well and I, I don't want that here. So that's why the model might look a bit choppy compared to that. Uh, I think that looks good. And it's a bit of a boring process. Huh? Cool. And then I just sort of named it, keep it organized, keep it simple. And also this way, like you can see here, I've got a pretty good base of just knowing what materials are and like what, what my model is. So that's a great starting point. Looks good. I haven't bothered with sort of small details, so I know this AC unit thing is going to be its own in that. Mm, can't be able to do that right now, so not much point. So yeah, now let's go into... Let's try and achieve our painting effect early on. So this painting effect, they actually use the base lighting information 
and may apply this slope blur over bake lighting to get that information, which sort of adds to the painting effect. But it's all pre baked lighting, and that's not really something I wanted to achieve for this project. So I still wanted to give it that painting look, but I didn't want to bake in the lighting, so that's why there's no lighting information baked. So I'm going to add a fill layer with our AO. Mm, that looks that looks like it. That's good. And then uh, I'll just right click add filter. And there's loads of different ones here. So we'll use the blur over later. But basically this like chips away your image. You can see it here where it like chips away into your texture map. Um it's quite useful with substance design as well. If you ever use that, it's quite a good one for adding cracks and wear and damage, which is like breaking up the shape, making it look a bit more natural. But we're going to use right, what color? Oil paint. There we go. It's a pretty beefy small filter. It's going to take a while to compute. There we go. So it's it's chopped our image quite a lot. It's giving it that sort of brush strokey look. And like bear in mind, I haven't hand painted any of this. And already it's kind of given that hand painted look. It's it's very messy, but it is, you know, super quick. So pros and cons. And we're just gonna play around with our effects. These are like presets, so just predetermine these points. Normally when I'm learning a new effect or new bit of tech for the start, I just play around with it, see what each one does. That looks a lot better. So if we try playing around with this, so you can see that drops a lot of the detail out and it kind of mores it down a bit. And I mean, most of these are self-explanatory. You know, someone's programmed this and they've told you what it is, but it's not always crystal clear what it could be to start with. So it's just great to experiment and play around with it. So I actually quite liked how it looked at the start. And I've done my experimentation already. It's like a re-repeat. So I'm going to stick with how it was. Cool. So that's given quite a nice effect. We only want this to affect our color as well. So this filter is only going to affect the color, but then we also want the layer to only be color because we're going to use some blend modes and just multiply it over the top. So already from like a base color pass, it's given us quite a lot of painty strokes, sort of where the AO is, and it's even breached out into most of the model. Like that's just, I personally think that's amazing, you know? Like that's, it'd be such a good base to like then go in and hand paint further details. But um, for this particular style and project, I was looking at trying to use these instead of hand painting details. So yeah, that's given us a nice effect. It's worth noting that sort of when you're using these blend modes, and they'll only work for whatever you've got selected here. So we can see our height lap isn't affected by when we change that to multiply. So if we change it back to normal, it's on metallic, it's still on normal. If we go back here, change it to multiply, it's on metallic, it's still normal. So these are all independent. So you can have different effects through different layers, which is quite good. Cool. So let's look at our brick material. Um, I know there's no brick material here. But for the style I was going for, I thought it'd be nice to have some normal detail added on. And uh, I could have actually built bricks in my 3D software and then baked it through a high poly. But let's say I were to change the size of the bricks. I have to go back in my 3D software, big them up, come back in, rebake it. And it's just a bit of a faff. So I'm going to add what we've got actually. Let's see what materials we've got. So we're going to add that normal detail in here, which is. It's nice. Let's add it as a let's add it as a mask. So it's like a black or white pattern. So it's pretty worth better to work as a mask, and then we can drive information underneath it through this layer. So I just do right click, add fill, and then we're using this brick generator as the fill layer, which is being mapped onto our mask, and then it's being masked again by the brick. Just kind of like cutting out. It's quite nice. Um, we'll just try playing our projection, just because my UVs don't match up. And uh, that's basically going to kind of just flatten 
like project it onto each side, which is like is super useful if you want to add uniform patterns, but you don't quite have perfect UVs or you you've got more tightly patched UVs which aren't straight and next to each other. So it's useful for that. Um, let's see what fix we've got. So we're gonna need a lot more bricks, maybe twelve. Um, Oh, too much. <laughs> uh, and basically, here you can see our triplane eyes is coming across from both sides. So it's been projected here, and it's kind of like blending in the middle here. I and mean, it's been projected here, it's blending in the middle. And um, so it's alright for our square objects. And we've got sharp edges, but any sort of curves. So I think this is all like 45 degree angles. It gets a bit lost in. So I just kind of correct that with a tiny tilt. It means we get different shapes along here. But it's ever so small, but I probably wouldn't notice. And we can also change, could we change hardness? Yeah. So that also works in getting rid of that blur when the two scenes meet. It's quite good. Uh, I don't want Beverly Bricks, I think I really want Beverly Bricks. A little bit around this, let's invert this, yeah, it's better, see how bricks are. Maybe more sort of straight corners, just because it's quite a straight architecture. Uh, and then I'm going to sort of just play around with all settings basically <laughs> until I get something that looks nice. And uh, I should don't think I want the brick pattern on here. So having our mask set up here means we can control where the pattern goes. And like, that's just super useful. Let's go back in any software and rebake stuff. It's just sorted out here. So I'm changing my height and minimum and maximum values. And basically that's setting some to be darker and some to be lighter. So then if we set this to a multiply effect, but we'll put a fill layer underneath it. So we'll just clear that mask. So you can see we're getting our, our brick pattern is multiplying over. In fact, we just darken that a bit. It's darkening over our, our existing layer. And it's giving us our detail. Some slope. So the slope is kind of like the the gradient coming from one side of a brick. And it's got a vertical one as well. Basically, I just want to like vary it up. So there's a lot of sort of difference between each brick. Yeah, it's, it's quite a good result. A little bit of offset variation. And maybe I want to be a bit. Uh, a bit more rectangular. Yeah, that's quite nice. Cool. Um, so we'll add a bit of height to this layer as well. Oh, I've got added some height to our bricks. It's, it's pretty nasty at the moment, so we'll just clean this up. Get rid of it. Let's put on normal. Okay, so we're going to clean up the height of this a bit. I think basically the height is just way too strong right now. And also, our roughness is, is acting a bit weird, so let's get a roughness map in. Um, we'll get some sort of grungy noise and we'll warp it up a bit. I quite like throw it to some base, personally. And we'll try playing with this again. And we'll just scale it down a bit so it tiles a bit. 
and then we'll add a filter and we'll just blur this pattern up a bit. Actually, let's, let's blur soak it up. So, yeah, let's go to so we can see here, before the blur soap, it's a very noisy, high frequency roughness scale. And we don't really want that for stars, so our blur soap is going to chip away and blotch up the shape of it. And we're just going to try to get somewhere here. Again, it's just like, just going to play around with the settings until you get something that you like. And that gives quite a nice effect. What's one do? Oh no. Mm -hmm. Not too sure about this. Maybe it needs a little blur afterwards. Just simple blur. Tiny bit. And I mean, that's, it's not correct, like, by any means. Like, it wouldn't really behave like this. But it provides some nice interest in. Sort of sheen and patterns as it goes over it. So we'll just clamp those values up a bit. I'm just have this fit to my roughness. Because I don't want it to be super shiny. I just want it to have a little bit of dirt. So although that looks like kind of whack earlier, you can see here now that it just provides a little bit of interest to the model. Like kind of always provides extra detail, but not overly done. So I think you've got to remember that at the start, some of your assets and effects will look rubbish at the start, but then as soon as you work them and you add any other stuff, they'll start to build up and look better. Speaking of which, this brick, I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with it. It's more, more rectangular. It's a bit better. Maybe, maybe it's a bit too round as well. Too much purple. And then let's just scale that up a bit. How's that look? Yeah, it looks a bit better. Let's, let's get him there. It's probably too too many now. Let's try and move through four. So that's just kind of our main brick shape and I'll it's probably a bit too much slope on that. I've gone too much the other way. <laughs> That's why this case like taking it down and take it down too much. And you amp it back up and it's, it's amped up too much. And we'll say our roughness has gone a bit away. Let's go. Okay. And we're going to copy this and we're going to actually. I wonder if adding a, a blur slope here might be better. It's very tiny. 0 0.01. 0 0.03. Yeah, that's better. Let's just change it to min. And you kind of see what blur slope does, it just walks up your shape a bit. Which is what we want here. I think we want here. And this is our one on top. And I'm going to invert it. So we can see our mask here. Like I, had, I want to add more to this grout in on this pattern. So to do that, I'm going to add more slope, a bit more height variation. Yeah, I've probably gone a bit. 
bit too much. So this is kind of like playing around and kind of getting something to it looks good. I don't want any height on this layer. I'm going to use the, the colour picker tool off here. It's a bit too high, it's a bit too noisy. Too many bricks. Let's go free. Yeah, maybe it needs uh, to be a bit lighter. So it's just kind of a lot of tweaking, a lot of small iterative processes. Uh, so that's gone wrong there. So I don't want the to be lighter. It's a bad man. I'm gonna go there. Cut over. It's got not bad. Very pushy bit further, but just keep things going. So we've kind of managed to add our normal detail here. Um, and it's also like it's all interactive, so let's suddenly say I don't want it to be bricks, I want it to be something else. We could change it all up in here for them to rebake, which is, is really nice. Uh, one other thing I will add is a sort of linear gradient from the bottom. And which Adam missed through our fill layer and then we're adding it for the base colour. Basically the linear gradient, it just takes the position of your model and we can control how much we want it to be. And this uses your world space normal map and it just picks two colour points. So if you wanted it to start you know, more at an angle, you can change it up like that. So it's quite useful. Let's just set this to multiply. Just one color. It's way too intense. It's not bad. Just a little bit of sort of darkening towards the bottom, just show it might be like dirt and age coming up. It's an industrial setting, so that makes sense. Uh, we could also add like a sort of colored gradient, which is quite common in stylized stuff, making things pop a bit more. Uh, what's next? Let's look at a metal. So for this particular asset, I kind of wanted to have some nice shiny metals that might pop and look a bit different. So that's why I've gone for sort of semi-PBR. I mean, it's not PBR, but it's using reference metallic to make stuff pop a bit, which is nice. That's a bit of shininess to it. So it could be fairly simple. Um, I think 0.4 gives quite a nice roughness value. Maybe it's a bit too light. So where we've got a sort of chimney here of age, we can actually add some, some gradients to show like darkening effects. So we'll add this as a gradient map instead, but we'll set it to try it. We'll set it to planar projection. And you can see the planar working here. Just basically projecting it all over our model. But we're going to crop it to our shape so it just works in this volume. And flip it upside down. Boom. Okay, I just went to exist in this, but. So that's a multiplier. Uh, so this channel is set to multiply. 
but the folder above it is set to normal. So it's not gonna, it's essentially not gonna work. <laughs> but if we set it to normal, okay, just scratch a bit of recording because that was wrong. Yeah, so we're just gonna put this in our metal light folder and so we get down a bit. Basically, that just provides some sort of nice darkening. There's been certain dirt up there. It's just getting a bit darker. Um, and we'll also do some uh, on the roughness as well. So we'll just change that. Go to our roughness to subtract. Yeah, that, but we want it to be inverted. Yeah, we'll probably just drop it down. I don't want it too drastic, just a tiny bit. And likewise for our colour, we don't want it to affect too much. Maybe that's quite a good one, like three. And we'll duplicate this down. I'll have it going there. Um, it's affecting more of a model than I would like it to here. So I'm just going to move it out. Actually, I don't really need to move it out. I'm just going to add a mask. And use our polygon tool. Like up here. And I'm going to do the same for this one down here. So we've got the same mask. Perfect. Yeah, basically, I use these like triplanar stuff just to add details, which might otherwise be really hard to get in. And it's also useful for like decals and stuff, so you can stamp project stuff on. It's just quite nice. Since it's got a whole, a whole website dedicated to useful resources like that, so I definitely suggest going to check it out. And one thing I'm going to do to the metal layers, because currently there's no, no roughness variation or anything, which is a bit, a bit rubbish. So I'm going to have a fill layer, and we're going to use the same AO trick here. Actually, we'll just copy it. But also, the only way to affect in our metal layers. So yeah, let's just do that there. Put in our ambient vision. Make sure I get the right one. I'm going to set this to affect roughness instead. And oh, it's gone funky. Oh, it's because it takes in from our color map. Yeah, so because we had no color map, it wasn't drawing any information from. And that's how this filter works. Yeah, so input takes base color. And it, and it goes a bit crazy, so let's just drop it down. And I'll probably change the add up the fine details. See, I've got a bit of a UVC issue, so I'll probably go figure go back into my model and fix that. I'm not worried about it for now. Cool. So that kind of shows blender modes around as well, which are really useful. Like you can do a lot. It's just like that Photoshop. I would just strongly advise since you're playing around with it, you know, if one doesn't do what you want, try a different one, try a different one. That's so all. The, uh, the replace blender mode is quite good. If you've got like a height layer that you want to remove all height underneath it and just have that. So that's let's say I wanted to add a, a little dimple of height here. I can actually use a blend mode since this. I can actually use the blend mode. I've still gone to height here. I can change it to replace. And that will get rid of any height information underneath it. So that's quite useful. Let's just set it to height only so we can see it. Yeah. So I mean you could sort of if you had a really particular area or a much higher res object, you could 
and then more damage or use a different brush. So add in some painting stuff by hand. It's quite useful. You, know, you don't just because you haven't got high poly doesn't mean you can't add high poly style details. You know this height map gets baked into the normal map on export, so it's it's quite useful. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to show you how to do some rust, but we're going to be painting it on, and we're going to have a slight burr filter on top of it, which is going to make it look hand painty. But we're not actually going to properly hand paint. I guess I got to be a sand painting. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to use a realistic rust material, but it's going to get chopped up a bit. Oh, a good point. Because this is just a bit too realistic for our style. I kind of want to pimp up the colour a bit more. Yeah, more orangey. That'd be quite good. And we'll. And our good friend the blur slope here. Pre drop it to point one. Point three. And that's quite good. So if someone's got a little paintbrush and just blocked on those different colours. Which I think from this angle works quite well. Cool. And then we'll add our black mask here. Add our filter. And we'll do exactly the same. But also size to min. I try a hundred. And then I'm just gonna get a really sort of choppy randomy brush. I think the, the ink dirt is quite a good one. Just so our strokes aren't straight and uniform. And then we're just gonna paint. I actually don't want any height information on our rust. Yeah, that's quite good. It's actually moving 1.3. So you can see it, now we can like paint our details, but it's actually being affected by this blur slope mask. So about it, it's um just kind of comes on as a patch. Then we add it in and gets warped up a bit. I think it's just kind of like a cheaper way, quicker way of doing it. And yeah, we can push it much further. And again, just, just trying to blend it mode, just trying out all the options, seeing what what works, what doesn't. Let's push it away. I mean, you can see here it's kind of it's gone on this bolt a bit. I've just been painting over. And we don't want that. So we're just going to add a folder and then put a mask in that folder. And mask out our area. So just kind of layering up masking to, to get the effect you want. And yeah, basically that's that's kind of it. And I'll just show you the decal solution quick for this text. So I'm gonna add a I'm gonna add a fill there. We're gonna have the Lee's the Lee's motor works. This bit. But uh, it's quite a specific bit of text here, it's quite a good font, there's a bit of an angle in it, it'd be quite hard to draw on. Um, and I think substance fonts aren't, aren't the best, so that's just not really it. Yeah, there's not a lot really similar to it. So I've basically just gone into Photoshop and I've, I've made an alpha. Here it is, and then we're going to stamp it on here. So um, because we're using a different brush, it had loads of random settings and angle gear and stuff on it. So my sort of stamping stuff is always good to go back to the, the basic card. And then we'll just search for areas. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of pretty good. It's a bit blurry because I dropped to 2K, but I should probably add more UV space for this object. And we could also do it a different way. We could add a fill layer and we could put this as the fill layer and then change it to planar projection 
and we'll just crop it to the shape. So this is exactly what I did for gradients, but for a more sort of, I guess, decal orientated, which is probably what it's designed for. I'm not entirely sure. And yeah, we could do it like this instead. So if you're kind of like, if I was trying to paint it, but I had loads of stuff in front of it and it was hard to get in there, maybe this might be more of a better way of approaching it. But yeah, keeping it masked as well. So if I want to change it to bright red, ooh, we can. It's kind of like keeping stuff masked is also really useful just for iteration and playing. You know, you might be presenting this to someone and uh, maybe that green doesn't come out all great when it's in game engine up here so you're like oh, I want that bit to stick out a bit more I'm gonna make it a bit a bit brighter a bit bolder that, yeah that sticks out a bit more and also then like let's say later on you want to add roughness information I don't want it to be rough because it's been painted on and we can do that really simply just kind of working working effectively you know keeping folder structure nice so naming your stuff and then also, like, if you handed this off to someone else, if you're working in a company, or they had to make edits to it, you know, they know what's going on. Be like, oh, this metal's too dark. I want to just change up a bit. Oh, metal dark. Excellent. I can see what this is being affected. I can lighten it up a bit. You know, it's just really useful, an efficient way of working. So it's quite good. Um, I'll just show you the, the finished one. So this is like finished. So it's just painted in rusting areas, got dripping here. And yeah, it's just building up lots of layers, getting it working. See the roof tiles is a bit hacky because it's triplane on on each bit. So while this took longer to set up, I probably, you know, if I was confident that that's the type of roof tiles I wanted, I probably would have baked in that information and done it in 3D. But this way it's worked great and you know, everything's got pros and cons. So then an AO around the windows. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Give it that sort of dusty, dusty feel. It's quite nice. Yeah, basically that's it. Yeah. Afterwards I exported it out. I uploaded it to Sketchpad and rendered it. And it worked out quite good. I let you like add done the ground and robot and the bin and stuff as separate files. Just because I wasn't quite sure if I was going to go what art direction I was going to go. So I thought I'd do the main building first and work on it from there. Yeah, basically that's it. Uh, so any questions, just I'll give the YouTube comments a read. And hopefully that's that's it. Maybe you like something. It's quite a basic tutorial, but you yeah. know. Scratch that out. And yeah, that's it. If you've learned something, I'll, uh, if you've got any questions or you know, further reading, you come visit me on my art station, I'll be happy to talk. Well, you know, I've got a few minor breakdowns there which have more information to do with the modelling and stuff, which is useful. At least if you're starting out, so, so. have fun, peace out.